we're not trying to treat the symptom. If you're trying to treat the symptom, then a traditional medicine approach does that really quite well. But that doesn't make any sense to me. We're trying to treat the cause of the problem. When you treat the cause of the problem, the symptom doesn't exist. All right, welcome to the Healing Reset. You guys, this is a podcast where we aim to provide hope and true healing from chronic suffering by talking to experts like we have on today on how to treat your whole body system, not just your symptoms. Contrary to modern day belief, your body is designed to heal. I'm Jess, your host. Today we have on Dr. Lizbeth Roy, a board certified physician in anti aging, functional, and corrective medicine. Our topic today is longevity. To me, this is a very curious concept because we often don't think about it until we lose our wellness. Dr. Roy is passionate not only about root cause medicine, but ensuring that life that follows is not only long, but healthy. Thank you very much for being on The Healing Reset, Dr. Roy. We're super happy to have you. Thanks very much for inviting me, Jess. Yeah. I love talking about these things, helping people empower themselves. That's the key. I love that. And as we were talking before the show, you have a lot of information out there to consume. So listeners, if you're interested in the show to follow, then you can find a lot about Dr. Roy's message just by doing a simple search, but we'll include some of that in the show notes. So what for you was the moment that brought you into functional medicine? You are a DO, right? You are a DO by, you know, I'll, I'll say by trade. By trade, yeah, I am. But then you entered into the world of integrative root cause functional medicine. I have actually only practiced root cause functional medicine in my career. But when I was a first year medical student, my son was 12 years old and he suddenly went from a very healthy life to a very sick life. And um, it was devastating to say the least. And probably the most impactful experience, so certainly the most impactful experience of my life and and of my career, because I very quickly saw the limitations of medicine. So, you know, when you give birth to a healthy child and you plug along, everything's going great, you don't realize what it is to, to deal with these types of challenges, right? Get doctor's appointments and, and, mystery, not understanding what's happening, uh, not being able to get answers, the way in which we're treated as part of the system. You know, it's not patient-centric. It is really, uh, it leaves quite a bit to be desired. And so that, the impression was what inspired me to make a commitment to being different. I was not going to practice with a prescription pad and make decisions in six minutes or less. Um, I was absolutely focused on knowing more about the person with whom I was partnering uh, in favor of their wellness. And so that had to exist outside of our system. So that's what inspired me. What is awesome to me is when I was looking up some information around you and your practice, one of the quotes that was unique, we are in the hospitality business. We just happen to practice cutting edge medicine. And when you're talking about being very focused on the individual and where you saw conventional medicine having limitations, you put the person first when you're speaking about everyone knows what a hospitality business is, right? Yeah. Yeah. It's a, a shift in thought when it comes to medicine. It is. And it's probably the most impactful thing that you could do because the healing starts with the relationship and it always has. And that is what's missing in medicine. We have all kinds of technologies. We have all kinds of advancements and diagnostics. And the relationship is central to the healing paradigm. And without it, you you get suboptimal results at best. And, and you get really isolation is the is a primary result of the current system, right? I know that's how I felt. I, I felt that uh, we were separate from our doctors. We went to the appointments. They made their best decisions. 
Uh, and they did. I mean, you know, they did the best that they could do in the model with which they were, I think, shackled to, to be honest with you. And that's the way it feels to a lot of providers, I think. You know, you have providers coming out of that system into a functional medicine because they went into this business to help people. And it's near impossible to do that under the current system. Fortunately, I was um, brought to this very early on and didn't ever go down that path. Um, so there's there's no relearning. And I think that's part of one of my gifts and what makes our care so powerful. And that is that we don't have a paradigm that we're stuck in. You know, we don't have this one way of thinking where we're compartmentalizing the body. Um, we look, you're a head to toe being, period, first and foremost. And so there's no unlearning, if that makes any sense. It does. And that's kind of uh, the mission behind the show is to continually pound in our heads that our body is a system. It's not just a representation of a symptom. Your symptom stems from a systematic issue. That's right. So when you use the word suboptimal in isolation and speaking to how conventional medicine comes and works through management of patients versus root cause medicine, that plays into the longevity conversation because we're not going to have longevity when we're not getting the healing results. So for you, can you break this down to listeners out there? What is longevity? You deal with sick people, my guess is every day. And so you're looking at this from all ends of the spectrum, from someone who is chronically ill to someone who right now feels very healthy. What does longevity mean? So longevity to me is really health span. It's not about time. It's about how long are you well? Right. And that's, that's yeah. the key. If we can increase your number of years that you're alive, as long as you're well, that's a beautiful thing. We certainly have all kinds of nursing homes um, filled with people who are not feeling very alive, certainly are not well, but we've extended their life. That's not longevity to me. Longevity is how many additional years of wellness can you achieve? And that starts by what it is that you do every day. It really is the sum total of your activity that will uh, facilitate a health span, a wellness. Now, why I think health span, that term is so intriguing because exactly we want good years, but this conversation is important because it's often not top of mind. I can't tell you, I wake up in the morning and think, how do I achieve longevity? And so my day-to-day, -day, my minute-to-minute -minute is not focused with that goal in mind, and that can't consume my every second. But for listeners out there, this is important stuff, right? Because we do want to look at root cause and having our body run as a well-fueled, well-balanced system. But how do we do that with the end in mind and finishing with a health span of wellness? Yeah. So how, how in America's culture, um, how do you see that playing out? I think it's all about how you prioritize the, the things in your life and the way that you spend your time, the way you spend your resources. I'm blessed by having a practice full of patients who really want to live their best life. They are motivated. They inspire me every day to make best decisions. Uh, I don't take care of a lot of sick people, honestly. And if they're, if they're not well when they come in, they're very well shortly thereafter. Because it's not difficult. It's not difficult. When you understand how the body works, you're able to remove the obstacles to wellness and then flood the body with what it is that it needs. It really writes itself. That's one of the tenets of osteopathy, right? Body has its own inherent ability to heal itself. Structure and function are interrelated. And so it's just a matter of understanding what is happening with your patient, what it is that they do every day that's contributing either good or bad. And usually, certainly with my patient, unknowingly, they're doing things that they don't realize are interfering with, with their optimal function. Um, they're experiencing symptoms. You know, maybe it's GI issues, so constipation, diarrhea, maybe bloating, maybe they're having allergy issues, perhaps their energy systems aren't working perfectly. And it's just a matter of relatively quickly 
with the help of good history taking and a good understanding of, of how the body should work, plus some functional type testing, right? There's tests that we do that are not necessarily expensive, uh, but incredibly impactful with the information that it provides that specialists in the best institutions wouldn't do, don't do, don't realize, can be done even, right? I'll just give a simple example of a, of a stool test where we look at your gut bacteria and any imbalances that might be there. In addition, any parasites and different fungus and things that we need to be aware of. Those opportunities are missed in a traditional approach, even at a gastroenterologist's office, which it's hard to even imagine. So a lot of people, I think, have the impression that, you know, this is just super high tech and unaffordable for most people and a real, that's just not true. Yes, it's high tech, uh, but it, it doesn't mean that it's a, any different experience for you. It's just a different high tech way of thinking things. In my mind, it, it really should be a standard of care to look at what's happening at a functional level um, is how can you start? How, how can you do it any other way? I can't imagine how you could prescribe a medication to treat a symptom and not actually understand what's causing that symptom. It, it's crazy. You know, and it's interesting. If I go to a traditional type of medical conference because I need to check all the boxes in order to renew my license every couple of years, uh, quite frequently someone will ask me what it is that I do and and I tell them functional medicine, oh, so you practice alternative medicine. And I say, no, actually, you do. Well, what do you mean? So I actually understand why it is that I'm doing what I'm doing and what I'm treating. I get evidence for what it is that I do, where the mechanism of your treatment is quite frequently unknown. And just to halt you, I've got some pharmaceutical experience here. When you say the mechanism is unknown, we're talking about mechanism of action in a lot of the prescriptions out there. They assume that certain things are being blocked, inhibited, as far as binding in your receptors, but they don't know. And so a lot of times it's an unknown outcome with these medications and how it's working with your unique chemistry. And so when you say evidence-based medicine, you're really saying, no, I do evidence-based medicine. I'm looking at your whole body. I understand it and I'm going to fix it and help it rebalance. Is that correct? That is correct. And it's important to, to say that um, I am absolutely not downplaying or disregarding what it is that our traditional medicine colleagues bring to the table. If I were having a heart attack, I would go to the hospital. And I think that's really important to say. So this is not a, a matter of judgment against. It's, it's really, my hope is that we will open the minds of the people who are listening to this podcast and, and educate them to other options. And so when we say evidence-based medicine, I think it's very important that the audience realizes what that means is there is evidence that the medication treats the symptom better than placebo, period. There is no evidence that says that we know exactly how it works. Many medications will treat the symptom better than placebo, yet we don't know how it does it. That's what we mean by mechanism of action is unknown. And that's very important because we're not trying to treat the symptom. If you're trying to treat the symptom, then a traditional medicine approach does that really quite well. But that doesn't make any sense to me. We're trying to treat the cause of the problem. When you treat the cause of the problem, the symptom doesn't exist. But more importantly, you are enhancing, at least maintaining the health of the organism, of your whole body, so that you don't go on to then develop other symptoms, right? Yeah. If you don't fix the cause, that symptom might be treated, but sure enough, something else is going to pop up because there's a breakdown that's occurring. Yeah. I had a doctor early on say, you can't dry off while you're still in the shower right? If the shower's still going, you can't towel off. So if we don't get to that issue, that core issue, your symptoms can be masked, right? But the issue can right. show up somewhere else. Now you said earlier, not that it was simple to heal, but I just started thinking, you know, we have people who are out there and their joints are inflamed. Their joints are very hot. We have people out there with chronic back pain, 
um, some listeners out there experiencing Alzheimer's, you name it, chronic 21st century issues. Speak to that person. A, do you have hope? B, what's inhibiting long-term wellness in America through your perspective? Good question. So we all know at this point in time, I believe, that inflammation is the precursor to all disease, right? We hear that said, well, what does that really mean? It means that your immune system is working against you instead of for you. It means that it's been triggered dysfunctionally. And what results then is any and every number of diseases. So let me break it down in this way. We have a genetic predisposition for certain diseases. And all that means is our genetics, which dictates our biochemistry, may have some weaknesses. And so therefore, if the system is stressed, meaning if there's an inflammation that's triggered, it's going to follow a genetic pathway, right? So if my family, everyone in my family, if they, when they die, they die of cancer, it stands to reason that if I have inflammation in my body, I'm probably going to manifest that as cancer. Maybe yours is cardiovascular disease. Other people, it might be Alzheimer's or autoimmune disease. So the key is to not trigger inflammation, mm-hmm. right? Chronic so inflammation. Here's, I'm going to go back even further. So what triggers inflammation? There are only two categories of things that trigger inflammation. And therefore, there are only two things that trigger disease. And that is toxicity and pathogens. Now, those are two big buckets. So what fits in the bucket of toxicity? Well, stress is a toxin, biochemical toxin. Food, quite frequently, commercially raised food, pesticides are toxins. Sugars are toxins. There are toxins in the water we drink. There are toxins in the lotions we put on our bodies. There are toxins in the air that we breathe. In the beds that we sleep in. And the beds that we sleep in. That's right. And the buildings that we work in. And so it's challenging to stay away from toxins these days. And so what you do is you control the toxins that you can control by eating organic foods, free range, grass fed meats if you if you eat animals and animal products by drinking uh, clean filtered water you know a lot of the things that we can do watch what it is that you put on your bodies the other way that we can help to reconcile if you will all of these toxins is by feeding our body all of the nutrients that we need to run our natural detoxifying systems you are what you eat and that means that if you don't feed your liver what it needs to go through phase one, phase two of liver detoxification, if you don't feed your GI system what it needs to eliminate these toxins through through the uh, your stool, through your feces, then you're not going to be able to reconcile these things. You're going to have an increased toxic burden made worse perhaps by a genetic predisposition to be a poor detoxifier, right? So toxins trigger inflammation, which will then cause in any number of disease. High cholesterol is triggered by an inflammation, right? So let's talk about the pathogen. Guys, I want to break this down really quick because in previous shows, we've talked about the body burden. So what Dr. Roy is really just pulling full circle is we have toxicity, we have pathogens, but when we're looking at toxicity, there's countless things that are coming at your body day to day. Women makeup, right? Just walking out with a face full of makeup. Do you know what's in that makeup? Our skin's absorbing it. And so how do we take our day to day, our minutes, which equate to longevity and actually think through what our body burden is and then eliminate some of those things. Can we go through life with no toxicity coming at us? No. Our bodies are resilient, which is why she mentioned the liver with the phase one, phase two. How do we set ourselves up to detox? So we we also recognize we live in a toxic world, but how do we take that body burden and take it down? So now pathogens. So pathogens are things like molds and fungus 
and viruses and bacteria. We have viral burdens from childhood quite frequently. Sometimes, you know, we know that type 1 diabetes is triggered by viruses or toxins, right? So we we have this understanding that these things uh, exist, but we forget that we have to keep our immune system very, very healthy so that it can keep all of those things at bay. Um, fungus such as what's in grains. So if you look around, grains are stored in silos. Silos contain mold. So when we're eating these grains, we're eating these molds. I live in South Florida. We live in the tropics. There's mold everywhere, right? And so knowing how to avoid that burden of molds is really important. Knowing that if you have had Epstein-Barr, for instance, or cytomegalovirus, these things cause mono when you're a kid quite frequently and can go on to reactivate in as you get older. And how does it reactivate? Well, maybe you go through a real stressful time. And so these things reactivate. So there's two causes of disease, and that is toxins and pathogens that trigger inflammation. So the things that you do every day, eating healthy food. So, you know, lots of veggies and spices and and fruits and clean, clean products is going to feed your body the nutrients that it needs. Being mindful of potential food allergies that, again, trigger an inflammatory response. Eliminating every day by drinking lots of water and uh, having a variety, getting enough sleep, practicing stress reduction, All of these things will help to accumulate benefit, right? To offset a lot of the toxins. You said eliminating every day. I'm assuming you're talking about having a bowel movement every day. Having a bowel movement every day, yeah. So some people would say every three days, every four days conventionally is normal. Yeah. What do you say to that person? Is that your body kind of sending out an early signal of, hey, I'm not able to Um, release or get rid of some of these toxins that your body is accumulating daily? Absolutely. It may be common. It is not normal. Your body needs to eliminate because every single minute of every single day, you are creating metabolic waste. That's how your engine runs. Your body is working. And if you don't eliminate that metabolic waste every day, then you will start to reabsorb it and you'll just take it back into the body. And so I think it's absolutely criminal to, when you look up the definition of constipation, <laughs> yeah. it, you know, not going for more than every three days might be constipation. That is crazy. That is absolutely crazy. You need to go every day easily, easily. And, and otherwise there's a problem. And, and that is the reason we need to be paying attention to symptoms every kind of symptom is because they're the early warning signs that there is an imbalance that's occurring and it's presenting as a breakdown, even if it's minor. Have people say, well, you know, yes, I have this congestion, this nasal congestion, but it doesn't bother me. I'm used to it. It's my whole life. Say, Well, just because you can tolerate it doesn't mean you shouldn't look into it because if there is a nasal congestion, then there's an inflammation and something is causing it. And trust me, it is showing up in ways that you may not even be aware of. It's interesting because we do walk around. Everyone will have something that they could complain about, but then we just gather a callus towards it. We get used to it. And so it's a non-issue. It's just me. It's just, just how I am, right? This is just how I present. So that is an intriguing thing for listeners out there and myself to think through. What are those things that we've just accepted as part of our beings? And are they trying to tell us something more? That's a good question. If your car starts making a funny noise, you don't turn up the radio. Yeah. Right. And yet that's what we do. We take a Tylenol or we, you know, we just turn up the radio. We don't really pay attention to those subtleties. And I'm not saying that you have to walk around and worry about every little ache and pain. That's not what I mean. I mean, really getting in touch with your body and knowing when it's not working properly. If you have rashes, for instance, that's a pretty good indicator that there's some underlying imbalance that is occurring. Simple things, hair loss, your nails aren't quite right, your skin is is not healthy. Those things are easy, easy signs that something else has gone awry. And the 
again, in our, in our traditional approach and the way that we've been trained as consumers is that you don't go to the doctor until there's something wrong. I mean, that's just kind of dumb. You don't not change your oil until the engine seizes up. That's just, that's just kind of crazy. And so understanding that being healthy, having a health span means that you're proactive in your wellness, that you're paying attention, you're proactive, and that you're doing the things that are necessary every day to support wellness. I love that. Again, it's thinking through longevity before it's taken from you. That's right. Now, we can really get into some deep stuff about some of the longevity technologies that we have available to us now, stem cells and some of the medications that help to turn back on functions that have been turned off as a process of aging or turning off functions that have been turned on as a process of aging. And that is a very exciting field of medicine for me. And it's something that we are taking our clients to that next level. But you have to have a fertile ground first. You have to go through this process of really eating healthy food and doing the, the, the things daily that need to be done in order to prepare yourself for that opportunity. You know, is it possible to live into the 140s? It, it very well could be. It very well could be. And if you're feeling great and you're 140, why not? Yeah. I mean, we're going to have people out there be like, yeah, right. 140. <laughs> So I love the confidence in this discussion because, right, we need to have a goal in mind of what our longevity, what our health span looks like. And sometimes that starts with walking beside an integrative practitioner, someone that does what you do. I once heard you state that you deserve to have somebody who will dig in and tease out the real reason why you're having chronic issues. And you just kind of spoke to that. So the two things coming at us right? We have those pathogens, we have toxicity. And that was my curiosity in terms of where do you start? And it might not be these therapies that are cutting edge, but where do you start and what therapies and tools can people out there say, Hey, this gives me a starting place, or this provides me some light at the end of a dark tunnel. Yeah. Well, I start with your story. I want to know what your story is. I want to know what you've done, how you're feeling, what you eat every day. You know, if you move your bowels, I want to start with with some of that. I take everyone through what I call uh, the studio detox, which is really a modified elimination diet. I make some assumptions with lots of detox type nutrients. And so through that four week process, we're changing the way you eat. We're changing the way you move. We are flooding your body with good things that balance your GI system and your feed your liver detoxification system. Typically at the end of that four weeks, you already feel very different because we've made assumptions and put a program together that addresses many of the issues that people have. Most of us are walking well. We may feel kind of crummy, but we're walking well. And and so as an osteopath, you know, I really harness that wellness to work in our favor. And so I assume that you have a few common obstacles and that's where we start. In the meantime, you know, we collect some blood. We might need to do a stool test if that seems obvious. Um, I love to look at your genetics. And so it's very simple and affordable these days to get a medical grade genetics, not a 23andMe or Ancestry.com. Those things are great for those purposes, but it's not a medical genetics. So we do a simple cheek swab. You only ever have to have it done once in your life because your genetics doesn't change. But what we know about your genetics changes constantly. So I run it through a particular software that gives me some information about how to support your body with nutrition. Because again, you are what you eat. Everything involved in how you function uh, is, is really centers around nutrients vitamins, minerals, amino acids, fatty acids. And so if I understand your genetics, I know how to support optimal function for you. So sometimes that's where we start. It really depends what it is that you're presenting with because I want to get rid of those symptoms for you as quickly as possible so that you can feel like you can fully engage with this care. And then we come around to affecting everything. Right. So if you come to me and you have no illness at all, you have no symptoms, you just feel like a million bucks and you want to live a good, long, healthy life, I may start with your genetics. 
and support you that way. I may, you know, take you through a different pathway than if you have particular symptoms. So many people have bloating and either constipation or diarrhea. They have acid reflux. They just don't feel right. They eat, they feel yucky. That's easy to fix. Now with that, what you just described, people out there, four weeks, right? If that's easy to fix, I just want to challenge every, do you have four weeks to yeah. really strip back and do some of these things to someone listening out there? If they're not in South Florida, I'm in Michigan. Could we find someone to do this in Michigan? Is this doable to walk along another practitioner and find health? It really is. And um, most of my patients don't live in Florida. Most of my okay. patients will fly in. Now, with COVID and this whole adventure, I have been taking care of people that I may not have even seen for the last year and a half, but we talk every 90 days or maybe even more frequently, depending upon what is going on. We ship them, you know, lab kits if we need to, it, whatever it is can very easily be done remotely, uh, at least initially. Now, there is a huge need for this type of care, as you mentioned at the beginning of, of our chat. We've just kicked off a company called Secure Your Wellness. So secureyourwellness.com. At this particular moment, we are offering very limited services while we get our infrastructure in place and we get our medical uh, providers in place. But in the very, we're in about 15 states right now. So we are legally prescribing in 15 different states. If you engage with our office, can we take care of you outside of those states? Yes. It's a little gray right now. Typically, the law is that we have to see you physically at least once in the year. So that's you know relatively easy. Who doesn't want to come to South Florida, right? Um, but we're, we are actually hiring practitioners and training them to these simple protocols. And we'll be in all 50 states within the next six months because it's so important. A lot of this can be do it yourself with proper guidance, meaning, you know, we're putting together some course type of content where we will give away these courses that help to educate you about, well, gee, you know, I have these issues. I could order this test and then maybe I could schedule an interpretation and a treatment session, right? Because people have various degrees of financial means. And also some people are just a little nervous about jumping in with both feet, you know, and they want to understand some of this. So we're trying to make it more and more available to people. Why do you think people are nervous to jump into this process? There's a lot of smoke and mirrors out there, you know, even among, unfortunately, some of, of the professionals, you know, and, and I don't think it's, there's any malintent. I think that, that practitioners are in different places in their learning. Right. Mm -hmm. And, and so we have a brand new patient yesterday, for instance, he has Parkinson's disease and he has been to more than a dozen very well positioned and well-respected institutions, if you will. Okay. Some of them integrative, some of them more traditional, and they don't have a real comprehensive systemic approach. And so as a result, he has spent a lot of money and he really hasn't been helped. When we first met him yesterday, he was very standoffish. You know, just he has to be here because he has to keep looking for, for something because he's not going to give up. So I give him a lot of credit. He's here, but he's very standoffish. As we were answering his questions and really helping him understand how it is that we approach these things, he really relaxed and he said to his wife, wow, this is what I've been looking for for the last 10 years. So people have bought things. They've, they've been told you're never going to be helped. He was told by one of the top neurologists that, you know, this is your destiny in the next several years is wheelchair. You're not going to be helped. And so there isn't a lot of hope. And though we don't ever give anyone any unrealistic expectations, what we say is we are going to dive in deep. We're going to be with you through this entire process. And we're never going to give up because that's what I needed to hear when my son wasn't well. That's all I wanted to hear. I did not expect anyone to cure him though that would have been nice, what I really needed was someone who wouldn't give up, 
who would walk with me through this process and and provide me with all of their knowledge and experience and be willing to continue to learn. And and that's it. I mean, I'm studying 90% of the time, you know, because you have to learn it when you're fully engaged with your patient and you're, you are in it together. There's no limits. You can't accept, Oh, I don't know how to do, I don't know anything about that. You say, I don't know anything about that boy. That's the next thing I'm going to learn because it might be, might be really important for this right here. So that's as important, I think, as being able to solve the problem. It's just being willing. Two things that come to mind is, A, the relationship part that you spoke to at the very beginning of our conversation and the hospitality part. It almost gives me goosebumps because I would say, and I'm making an assumption here, most people don't have that experience with even being able to have a true candid conversation with their doctor at an annual physical or their specialty doctor, what they say is what we do. So to even just have someone say, I'm going to partner with you. I don't know what the outcome is going to be, but we're going to figure it out the best we can. And I will be with you till the end. It's amazing to hear. It really elevates um, the opportunity when that happens. People walk out and say, I already feel better. Is that possible? Yes, it's possible. Absolutely. It's possible. Sometimes you, you just need to be lifted in that way. I had a great experience as a medical student and I had a, one of my mentors stood up in front of the class. You know, there were about a hundred and hundred plus of us and said, all you have to do is love your patient. And I thought to myself, wow, okay, I can do that. But I'm looking around and a lot of my fellow students were saying, oh, I don't know. I'm not so sure. That was a real eye opener for me. It was a real eye opener for me. And and that's part of of the problem, really, is this insecurity with when I show up to someone who needs my help, not expecting that I bring everything. What I bring is a willingness. And that's all you need. Right. As a student, watch, you know, you, you it's kind of fun, actually, to watch students and residents walk into a room when they're learning, because the first thing they do is they grab the chart off the wall, off the, out of the basket and they look at it and they're, they're sweating and they're thinking, what am I going to do? And if the chart is thick, there's even more angst. Well, knowing that all I have to do is love that person. I never looked at the chart. I grabbed it and I walked through the door and I sat, looked them in the eye and I shook their hand and introduced myself and said, what can I do for you? And then they tell you, yeah. And then you go to the chart to say, okay, you know, how do I navigate through this? So that's the the barrier, I think, is the relationship quite frequently. So we're talking a lot about illness and then with the end game of longevity or health span. And so what I'm picking up is that we do have to address some some issues, right? Most people are walking around right now listening to this podcast saying there's something going on that's off in my body. I have a chronic condition. I have chronic pain. We're going to address that first, and then we're going to look at the rest of your years. Is that kind of how you take control of this of like, hey, we've got to bring your body back into balance. And then we're going to walk together. Hopefully, I don't have to see you much (laughs) throughout the years because there'll be good years. Right. That's right. Well, and we're going to see each other on a regular basis. So we continue to keep it good. Because one other thing is, is accountability. Who are you Mm -hmm. accountable to? A lot of people can't be accountable to themselves. There's too many Mickey D's on the corners to to not have accountability. That's right. I mean, I've had people say, well, I haven't really been behaving myself. So can we draw my blood in two months? I said, no, we're going to draw your blood right now. And we're going to look at what that your choices, how it is that it's affecting you. And there's no judgment. There's no judgment. It's a matter of, of, of awareness. And it's a matter of understanding that you're in control. You're in control. And so that accountability, that gentle, caring accountability without judgment is really important. And it's a gentle steering toward a longevity, health span longevity. It's not, oh, I'm not doing well. Come on in. Let me fix you and then send you off until you're not doing well again. That's not it at all. It's a reminder. It's a it's execution of a particular plan. It's constantly looking and adjusting and looking and adjusting. That's how you get to that goal. That's how you get to the goal. And that's the best 
uh, patient for me. That's that is the best person who you know they're not looking to me to create miracles all the time. They're a partner in this process. Yeah, so Which, you run labs on a regular basis, and you 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 know you steer the ship. Yeah, we talk about that. Be an advocate for yourself. If you're sure. out there consuming this podcast, be an advocate for yourself. Have an accountability partner. And in this case, most people don't look at it as their physician, yeah. which is a beautiful thing to say. I'm going to lovingly, without judgment, without shame, I'm going to love you well by guiding you. That's right. Hold you accountable so you can realize your full potential. Oh, I love that. Yeah. Thank you so much. I just want to challenge the listeners. What does longevity mean to you, man? It's got to resonate somehow. What do our years ahead look like? We have control. We have more control than we're told. We're designed to heal. I know that's said often, but your body is a beautiful machine that's designed to heal. That's right. And what you do to it for extended health span, if I can just interject yeah. here just real quick. It's not about looking at the future. It's about just being in it today. Today, I'm going to do this. Today, I'm going to make these choices. Today, I'm going to drink enough water. Today, I'm going to move my body. Today, I'm going to go to bed. I'm not going to watch the news. You know, today, I'm going to relax. I'm going to have a loving relationship. Today, I'm going to eat good food. And today, I'm going to see my functional physician and make sure that everything is aligned. And I'm going to take whatever it is that I need to take to support my genetics. It's really all about today. If we keep looking too far in the future, it doesn't feel real, but it is real. And it's the sum total of everything that you do every day. That's what's going to lead to health span. So I have two final questions. The first one's easy. You've mentioned genetics a couple of times in the medical genetics. Is that a prescription or something that has to come from a doctor? Or can someone go out and get that individually? I know we can do 23andMe. I know we can do the Ancestry.com. But can they go out and get the medical, quote unquote, grade genetic test? No, you have to get it through your doctor because, and here's what's most important. If you remember years ago, 23andMe was halted by the FDA and that was not because of the quality of their test. It was because they were providing medical interpretation to people without a doctor involved. And that's important because if 23andMe report said you have a predisposition for Parkinson's and you have a family member who died of Parkinson's or is in the thralls of Parkinson's, it's irresponsible to give you that information without a context and without some sort of, so I I think that's important to understand your genetics are, it's important and it's important to understand what it means and what to do about it so that it's not a fear based thing. That's interesting. That's good to know. Question number two, we have listeners out there and we end this podcast by saying, what are three things that they can implement today for better health? We talked about the minutes that lead to the hours that lead to the days years, longevity. We want health span. What controls the minutes today? What are three things that I can walk away with and put in? Find a functional physician you can work with to do an evaluation to understand your current state of wellness. That's important. Okay. If you walk around feeling well, find someone who can really look at what's happening in your body and advise you before the the wheels fall off the cart, right? So be Mm -hmm. proactive. Number two is know that you are what you eat and you are, uh, you are really what you eat ate. (laughs) So, So understand where does your food come from? Control it as much as you possibly can. It's a real thing. This whole organic stuff, that is not a marketing ploy. It really isn't. It is an essential need because the quality of what you put in your mouth is going to dictate the quality of your life, 100%. Number three is shut off the television, get your butt into bed, meditate, listen to a guided meditation, pray, make love to your partner, whatever it is that you do to put you in a deep restorative sleep and wake up feeling grateful. Those are the three most powerful things that I can think of right off the top. That's awesome. It's been a pleasure just listening to what's inside your brain. Thank you for coming on The Healing Reset. I appreciate you very much. All right. Until next time.